Our next guest is a global autonomous delivery innovator, working with customers including DHL Express, Estonia, and in Belgium, and stores in Lithuania, among others, delivering groceries. And of course, there's a lot of talk about those kinds of things these days. So we thought, let's have the Chief Business Development Officer from Cleven, if I'm saying that right, I'm going to confirm, right? You're Nathan good. Ray joins us. Nathan, welcome into tomorrow. How are you? I'm doing great, Dave. Thanks for having us. Good. Am I saying that right? Cleven? Cleven, absolutely. Okay. Just Te like clever. Ah, very good, very good. Uh, tell me about Cleven as a company first, and then let's get into the stuff you guys are doing. Absolutely. So we're founded in Estonia. Uh, we're in four countries in Europe right now. I've done over 14,000 safe miles uh, in Europe so far, and just launched in Fort Worth, Texas in September, our U.S. headquarters. Well, I was going to say, why? from Europe all these 14,000 miles and then suddenly you find yourself in Texas. But yeah, well, we see ourselves, uh, the U.S. market's hugely important and uh, with labor shortages around the country, we see ourselves as an ideal solution to help really solve that last mile problem of yeah. not enough drivers to get products to home around the country and we have an ideal solution to help out with that. Is it safe to say it's robotics doing the job? Is that what you're working with? Or Yes, uh, mm -hmm. we call it an autonomous robotic carrier. Uh, okay. So we work, start with teleoperations. Uh, our drivers can remote operate the vehicles from anywhere in the world. Uh, we've got a control station over at Eureka Park here at CES. Uh, so drivers can set up, uh, get behind the wheel, and basically they lay down an autonomous path. And really almost instantaneously, that vehicle will then follow that autonomous path and wow. can deliver point to point on that path. Because we have, is it Uber Eats? in Miami, in our town, uh, that has been doing the little robotic autonomous vehicles downtown or Brickell area, I think it is, uh, delivering meals and, and groceries and so forth. And uh, not up in our neck of the woods, we're a little north of that in the Miami area. But, you know, I'm thinking I would probably order from somebody who does that being a tech guy, Absolutely. you know, and uh, sure, I don't have to go to Publix, just bring bring my groceries. Uh, is yeah. that kind of the ultimate concept here? The idea is to certainly expand on what you guys do. Absolutely. That, that's exactly the idea. Uh, whether it's groceries, whether it's hot food, um, items in, in local area were really designed for, for neighborhoods. Uh, think of three to five miles from wherever that food's coming from. You place your order, uh, you get a text when it's on, a, on its way, you get a text when it arrives at your house, you go out, meet our vehicle, put in your pin code, your food's right there, and you go inside and, and enjoy. And you don't have to tip the robot? You don't have to tip the <laughs> robot. You're welcome to, but I it's really guess. not going to appreciate it. Yeah, right, exactly. No, unless you get it to say thank you if, if it hears coins dropping or something. I don't know. Well, we haven't put a voice in yet, but <laughs> if you'd like to nominate yourself, Dave, you're more than welcome well, to. As long as I'm away from the desert and this uh, throat <laughs> issue that always dries up. It'd be my pleasure to be uh, the voice of Clevin. It'd be clever. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I'd like that. Uh, what about the mapping technology? I understand you guys are doing some really unique things with that. Yeah, one of the biggest differentiators uh, for our technology is that when we go into a market, we don't need that multiple month uh, kind of lead time to go into a market. Uh, we can set down the path with our vehicles. And so uh, we're able to scale really quickly, really as fast as any customer wants. So are you, so are you for example, running vehicles to do your own mapping? Yes, we map oh. from the vehicles. Wow. And, and so uh, scalability is one of our key differentiators. So uh, really as fast as we can deploy vehicles, we can start mapping new neighborhoods. And uh, that's one of the, the cool things about our company is that we really started with the product in mind, built a product that's all weather, uh, all types of day, and really can scale very quickly. Yeah, apparently. And, and uh, other cities here in the U.S. that you are working on or soon to to visit tell me miami is one of them because <laughs> uh, uber uber needs some competition come on well you know we'll uh new cities uh we'll uh have to wait and see on, on where we go next um we just actually launched in september uh, uh -huh. and so right now our focus is really developing those partnerships with the localities mm -hmm. uh, i've talked to quite a few uh very interested cities uh yeah. here at ces um but uh but yeah that's really our focus now is expanding across the u.s market getting the name out there uh developing those partnerships uh including working with localities to to talk about you know how we can implement this uh work with the authorities to really introduce them to the vehicle um, and, and we're really proud of our safety record. That 
fourteen thousand miles without a safety incident. Yeah, you know, that's it's, it's I really mean exciting. that that's a good track record right there. How do you determine what cities that you're going to next seriously consider? Uh, uh, are, there, are there particular factors involved? Uh, a lot of it comes down to, to regulation. Here in the U.S., uh, autonomy is very new. Mm -hmm. uh, every state is almost like a new country in, in terms of uh, uh, different regulations. And then the and counties laws. in the state and the cities in the county, and yeah, it gets, it, it, it gets it, nuts. It, exactly. <laughs> and so uh, some areas are more uh, kind of forward-looking forward mm -hmm. and more looking to uh, uh, adopt the new technology and be a part of that. And so that's really what we're looking for, uh, you know, cities, localities, and then the companies in those areas who, who kind of want want to be on the on the bleeding edge of technology and so that's really how we identify uh, where we want to go how big is this vehicle that we're talking about uh, it's about eight feet long five feet tall uh, so relatively small mm -hmm. um, really like I said designed for that local neighborhood uh, delivery other different thing about us is uh, it's multifunctional so while last mile uh, food delivery is really kind of our our niche you can put a flatbed on the back uh, you can put uh, security camera so for like neighborhood watch it can kind of patrol oh. your neighborhood uh, vending machine uh, really anything you can um, fit on that eight by five foot frame uh, where you want to save transportation costs save those labor costs uh, you can apply to our vehicle you should talk to our friends like Andy who run a security company and say you know you ought to, because they are very forward thinking and they're doing everything they can with tech and you say, you know what, Let, why don't you guys be one of the first test group? Because I can see that that in and of itself as an autonomous vehicle can really be handy. And you're not having to pay a human to patrol an area. Absolutely. Hmm. I, should talk, I should get Andy's number after the show. Absolutely. And his business card. Because I think those are the kinds of things that will make a difference. And real quick, where do you see this whole autonomous delivery industry going? into tomorrow. <laughs> I, I think the big thing uh, that isn't going to change right now is the labor market is only going to get tighter. And uh, because of that, technologies like ours are going to continue to take off. Yeah. And really, uh, I think what the market is going to do, especially because financing is getting tighter, there is no free money out there. Yeah. Uh, companies like ours, where the product is proven and ready to go, I think are really going to differentiate themselves from others. And so uh, you're going to see companies that have the product, that are ready and able to deliver value to customers, I think you're going to really start them, start seeing them succeed and take off and um, really separate themselves in the market over the next couple of years. Well, Nathan, you're a delight to talk with and, you know, covering tech. It's what we do. So these are the things that get us excited for our audience as well. So be sure to keep us informed about things going on. And, uh, and we're happy to talk to our audience about it as well. Absolutely. Appreciate the time, Dave. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure, too. You want to visit them at clevon.com. We'll get you there, of course, when you visit us, assuming I have any voice left. But you can visit us regardless. I can be quiet. And you can visit intotomorrow.com. Coming to you from the Human Touch Massage Chairs exhibit. And I need a massage for my throat. I don't think any of their chairs do that. It would probably not be safe. Uh, but do check out all of the videos from here in Las Vegas this week at intotomorrow.com. Meantime, stay tuned. I'm Dave Graveline. There's much more to come right here on the Advanced Media Network.